Um, well, hey there. I'm doing a little maintenance here. Uh, this saw, if you don't know anything about the 500s or the 661s, um, you know after a while they get floppy, right? And by that I mean if you hold the saw out um, with a bar attached, you can, you can feel or watch the flex in the mounts from the saw. This saw's got real floppy. I noticed over the last couple days that I was just getting a lot of uh, vibration to the hand. So um, we're going to go about, I've ordered, uh, ordered a suspension kit, 500i suspension kit from Gordy at West Coast Saw. Um, this is, this is new. This must be a winter thing or a, or a holiday thing, but, um, new little sticker deal and then QR code for tips and tricks on installation and whatnot. So, uh, that's a fun touch. I like that. So. Um, yeah, just real down and dirty. Um, while I'm at it, a couple things. Um, tomorrow, this came at a really good time. Tomorrow I'm starting a little, <coughs> a little tree length job. Um, it's, it's an overgrown Christmas tree farm, so a bunch of noble fir. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Oh, well, that would, that would explain some of it there. I'm missing my... I'm missing a bolt right on top of the cylinder. That would make a big difference. Huh. Well, there we go. There's part of the problem. Um, anywho, um, I'm going to... Uh, yeah, I'm starting, starting a little tree-length job up in Silverton, overgrown Christmas tree farm. Um, thousand... There's a thousand million trees to take out of there. Boy, I hope those threads are all right. There's a million trees to take out of there, so it's going to be a pain in the butt, but the, the things we do for money, huh? <clears throat> but it came at a good time. I got to use the saw. This is a really nice saw to use for that kind of work, that tree link stuff. It's just got so much zip in such a light package. So we're gonna we're gonna get her together here. These can be kind of a pain. <sighs> These 500i handles and the 661 they can be a pain if you don't know a little trick. But those can be tough to get off. So we've got the handle. I'm gonna throw that off to the side, and we are going to start removing the mounts. Now, now it comes with all the little mounts here. See if I can't open this up without cutting anything. So it comes with two of these little bad guys. I don't know what to call it. I call it a flower. Well, I don't know, little flower mount and a harder spring. I'll kind of go over shortly how or where where exactly those go. So <clears throat> first things first, kind of you can you can do this without taking the handle off. You just want to be kind of gentle. Um, there's one right here. You poke out. There we go. That one's poked out. You can see the build quality in these. So that's the one I just popped out. And this is what replaces it. And this is, it's not even a solid piece of rubber, right? It's its kind of uh, flared and, and dimpled in there. Adds a little cush, I suppose. But, I mean, just look how much bigger that is. It's still that nice, same soft rubber. It's not going to hurt anything. It's not going to stiffen it up too much. It's just going to give it a really nice feel, a stiffer feel, so you don't run into that issue of... Um, oh, there we go. There's that second one. So you don't run into that issue of it getting floppy, and then you can just feel it vibrating into your hands. It's, it's not... 
if I wanted to feel that, I'd be running my, I'd be running my 066. You know, they're, they're, uh, let's see, where's my oil? Those 066s, if you want, if you want to have that vibration, man, good on you. Run your 066. But, uh, I do not. I don't like vibration anymore. And it's fun, don't get me wrong, it's fun to pull out the old 066 every now and then, but not anymore. I just don't find it appealing quite the same. So I put a little oil on these. Frankly, I don't know if it degrades the rubber or not, but it slips them right in uh, really nice, really easy. Oh, oh, oh. Also makes them hard to hold on to. <clears throat> Come on, in your home. Ah, there it is. Popped right in there. So the two I just did, there's one on the clutch side, right there, and they pop in from the inside. And there's one tucked in here against the tank and the flywheel cover, or the flywheel housing. So those are those two, these two that I just removed, and your next one is going to be in this little spring assembly here. So that is going to require me, if I remember correct, I need to, yeah, if I remember right, I need to pull that dog out. Maybe not. I may, I may be able to, let's see, to get some air. Yeah, oh, oh, come on, a little more air. Yeah, pick. Yep, you gotta take the dog off, sure enough. That's fine. Get you a pick and some compressed air clean out those bolt heads, T27 Torx. That way you don't strip those out. Here's one. Oh, and we can slip that out there. Perfect. Bring that out the rest of the way. And this should just kind of finagle out of here. There we go. So what we're going to end up doing, we're going to end up replacing this little flower piece and this spring right here. A spring and a much better uh, flower. I don't know. That's what I call it. There you go. There's your flower. And these springs, they just, they thread right on. <clears throat> Take that one, where's my new spring? There it is. Just like before, threads right on. And threads right on. Now that's a little looser fitting than I remember, but I'm sure once it all goes together, it's probably fine. Let's just swap sides and see what happens. Yeah, about the same. That's fine right there. Now you just reverse 
your operation of order, order of operations here. Slip that back in, make sure that flower's in there just right, just so. And this. Missed it. <laughs> Almost. There we go. And we're back. Back in action. Make sure both of those are in. They are in. Get the dog back in. Let's see. While we're here, we'll hit her with some Loctite. Hello. Okay, and we are back. Um, had to attend to my fatherly duties. Um, where do we leave off? I don't know, but uh, here we are. Uh, missing bolts. Yes, I have. I think I have the things. <clears throat> so I need to get the handle back on. I kicked something. It felt important. <clears throat> the saw has been rattling itself apart. <clears throat> you tell something was wrong. <laughs> tell something was wrong when... Uh, took that thing off and the, uh, the bolt was missing. It was literally rattling itself apart. That's hilarious. Correct. All these are the same size. Yep. And they will all go on as such. Okay, those are all on. Now I just gotta see if I can find the correct size bolt, which I would assume will be the same thread size as this guy here. But as far as depth, we'll see. Let me check if these threads are all right. Yeah, they're fine. A little bolt bin. A little too long. Yeah, just get it. Why not? Just make a mess. Oh, 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 oh. Is this it? Here we go.
<clears throat> As usual, a little Loctite red because I hate with a I hate my future self. Okay, we are back in business, folks. I can tell already the saw is super solid. Um, ooh, I am missing one more bolt. <clears throat> that would be a muffler bolt here. So, I'm gonna take this one out just to make sure I know what size I need. <clears throat> Looks like that's the one. I believe so. Again, like I said before, because I hate my future self, hit her with some Loctite Red. Those all seem tight. Well, I think is what what's happened. I've rounded it out enough that a pair of pliers are gonna have to do the trick. Okay. There we go. Back in action, very cool. Like I said, if you haven't already, and I've already shown you these, but still solution to the, I, I believe what they were trying to do was to give a really soft vibe. They were trying to um, have more damper than they were trying to have support so they made these kind of small, kind of weak, and kind of flimsy, obviously um, for dampening reasons. But after heavy use or extended use, they get floppy and they wear out, and and um, the saw just starts the 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 right here at the flywheel, the flywheel housing or shroud or cover will make contact with the tank because everything is just flexing too much and you'll get that sharp vibration right into your hand. Um, eventually it's gonna wear a hole right into your tank. Um, so I would highly recommend <clears throat> getting the West Coast Saw 500i falling, Fallers Falling Suspension Kit. Um, very worthwhile investment. Um, while we're on the topic of worthwhile investment, there's a couple things um, that I feel are an absolute necessary um, need from West Coast Saw. And the biggest one, I believe, is, there we go, is the clutch cover. This is the West Coast style clutch cover. It's, it's flared out at the base. And it has a great big old chip deflector here. And it just allows for better chip evacuation. Um, so with the stock 500i and the 462, it has that smaller uh, clutch cover. And it's really just not suitable. I don't, know, I don't know why they even make it. I don't know why people run it. But um, the side cover 
the clutch cover from West Coast Saw on the 500i and the 462 are absolutely essential. For every other saw, I think it's just a glam piece, um, which it looks cool. If you're into customizing saws, they look great. But, but, for, but for these saws specifically, absolutely an essential piece. So we will, uh, you'll see her out there tomorrow in action. We'll do some, uh, we're going to do some small tree felling. So look forward to that. know if you can see me too well but today is an absolute soaker time for a new chain this thing is straight out of the box or well straight off the roll anyways now I always take two or three swipes off of a brand new chain if I haven't ground it Typically, I will <clears throat> spin that new chain up and I'll throw it on the grinder and put a real edge on it. But it's a little lazy. So. Tired. Hauling, hauling butt today. Small trees. I think I've cut about two acres today. And they are just packed in here, you know. 
like I was saying before, it's an old Christmas tree farm. And they pack them in tight. <clears throat> Clearing up a little bit, but the breeze. is working against me here. It's been a lot of setting up three, four, five, six of them, and finding one that leans the right way and knocking it all over. So, I'm just about out of fuel, and that'll be the end of my day once I run myself out of fuel. Luckily, this job is nice and close to the house, so get home and dry off. Well, actually, get home and hop in the hot shower. So I don't use a, uh, <clears throat> a raker gauge, as you can see. It's all based on feel. You know, I'll... I'll bring it out and I keep one of these on me and after a grind or two you just feel it you know it's not biting as much so take your file and take your acres down as much as you need you don't need to go crazy you know one or two swipes to maintain it the rest of the time and you're you're good so let's take a look at the rest of the job here so I have about half of it. I'll, we'll get over here. <clears throat> whoa, 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 whoa. I started way down there this morning. Roughed out the property line and I've just been working my way up the hill and I just kind of eyeballed and see if I could cut this thing in half. Worked up to the house there. This is what I've got left today. See how much of it I can get with what I have left in fuel. So, set you up somewhere, see if we can't get a video of this. Like I said, it's all leaning up the hill and the wind is going uphill as well, but we'll see what happens.
What a neat day that was. Oh, just like I thought it was a soaker. Oh boy. Um, <coughs> it was wet. I think I got just under half the property cut, which totals about uh, four acres. So I, I think I did just under, just under two acres of cutting today which is pretty good uh, pretty good especially with how uh, how tight packed those are in and in there and they all seem to lean uphill oh geez and then the wind was pushing uphill as well a lot of rain conditions were against us so I'm pretty proud of that uh, just went through all my fuel and uh, once I ran out we called her a day so <coughs> headed back home we've got the uh, the replanting scheduled for March it's uh, December now so uh, I've got the replanting scheduled for March and then uh, the following week well the following week from now um, they'll be in here filing brush and stacking brush and whatnot so really fun really cool I'm I'm soaked Cold, warm enough now. Got the heater going. Um, I'm gonna jump, go home, and jump in the shower. Call it a day. Neat little drive through here. This is where all the Christmas trees are. This is where, uh, not all, but they do a lot of Christmas trees out here. Hence the overgrown Christmas tree patch that I'm doing. But um, yeah, driving down, you'll get a good view of that. Anyways, catch you later. Catch you tomorrow. We'll be back at it. <coughs> Another great topic. And this, uh, always sparks a lot of debate is I, uh, is oils, um, 
I run Amsoil, Amsoil Dominator. Fantastic stuff in my opinion. Um, I have Saber as well. People, a lot of people use Saber, um, I believe. And after looking at some of the tech data on it, I believe it's more of a, say, homeowner, um, more of a homeowner use oil. Uh, this stuff will hold up to some pretty intense stuff. Um, that being said, for five gallons, I mix this stuff up for 40 to 1. So, there you go. Five gallons, 40 to 1. That's 16 ounces of oil. <coughs> 16 ounces of two-stroke mix. What I also do, I add Marvel Mystery Oil. A little bit of extra film strength and um, is just a great lubrication, a great general lubrication. Um, I my cylinders and my pistons and my exhaust ports are very 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 clean and i attribute that to this marvel mystery oil for whatever reason it seems to leave a pretty good film without um without oil soaking um, but it leaves a pretty good film and it just keeps all the carbon off i don't know i'm i don't i'm not the scientist about that kind of stuff but what i do for another five gallons i add another five ounces of this stuff so here you go so essentially what that brings me to you can you can either call it uh 40 to 1 with five ounces of marvel mystery oil or what i say it's all it's all freaking oil so what i say as i run 32 to 1 um Technically, that's one ounce over 32 to 1 for a five-gallon jug, um, but I call it 32 to 1. Why not? Um, I run all my saws on this. I run my hopped-up saws on this. I run my stock saws on this. None have an issue. <clears throat> they smoke a little bit in the morning, and it clears right up, and that's it. And they and the saws love it. So, so that's what I do there. Fun little trick. For whatever reason, a lot of people haven't caught on to this. So I try and get all the oil in there, right? I don't like seeing all the leftover oil in my little mix it here. So what I do, I dump the, the majority of it in. This guy a quick little shake and then I don't know if you can see it but I just put a little bit of fuel in here <clears throat> see that I just put a little bit of fuel in there right so that oil is soluble in the fuel so it's a good way to um, it's a good way to get all the excess oil out, right? All the excess oil. And then you guarantee you have a accurate mixture because now you've cleaned out all the oil that was stuck to the sidewalls of your little mixer can. Is it gonna make that big of a difference? No. Um, but if you're kinda half OCD like me, it makes a big difference to me. So, got that all dirty, that's cool. Um, if you're anything like me, put a little fuel, shake it up, pour it back in, and uh, your mix is scientifically perfect. Um, <laughs> that being said, it's time for me to put everything back away. That's how I do it. You don't need to do it that way. I'm not saying that that's the only way to do it, but that's just the way I do it. There's a lot of things in this cutting world that are that way. It's just a way that somebody does it. They're not telling you you have to do it that way. That's the way I do it.
So this is just plain old impressive. I um, and I'll let you know at the end. I'll I'll show you what I do to kind of obtain these results. But I mean, just look how caked that is on there. It's I mean, there's just a lot. This is probably four or five weeks of not changing this filter, but on the inside it is absolutely clean spotless i don't know if you can see that with the lighting but spotless in there so and i'll let you know the secret sauce here in a minute but first off is a good you have to have a good foam filter oil and then for cleaning it's it's not the recommended way to do it but this is what everybody does it's just easy and it does the best job. I have a little bucket of saw gas in here. And I just dump the filter in and I just work everything out. It gets it real nice and clean. Dang near brand new. Now, what I believe you're supposed to do, you're supposed to do uh, hot soapy water, Dawn dish soap, or uh, Palm olive, I hear, works really good. I don't know the difference between the two, but I've heard palm olive works better than Dawn in this application, so. Whatever. I use saw gas. To be honest with you, it's not even clean saw gas. It's a dirty saw gas. This is, this is all my junk. Dump all my junk in here. I'm sure there's some transmission fluid in here. I'm sure there's some little bit of oil. Plenty of degreaser in here. It's just all the junk that gets left over. And if I have a can of saw gas sitting around too long, I'll and I'll dump the rest in here for that. It doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. There we go, we're about done. Another reason I like to do this, I'll show you here in a quick second. You've got a filter with just a little bit of saw gas on it. And, um... If you know anything about foam filter oil, it's some thick stuff, right? So you pour a little bit of that foam filter oil on here, and with a little bit of saw gas that's left over on the filter material, on the filter element, we'll thin it out a little bit. Like if you're using the bell ray, it's kind of hard to work that bell ray into the element because it's so stinking thick. Um, it's a great oil, but it's stinking thick. Um, same thing with, I think it's called FFT, foam filter treatment. Um, great stuff, but super thick. You have to, you don't have to, but I recommend that you cut it with, with, with something that'll thin it out. Set that somewhere clean. Clean off your housing or your cage, whatever you want to call it. Oop, lost the lid. Blow it off. <clears throat> there you go, put it somewhere clean. And 
I keep my foam filter oil. You saw me earlier. I was filling this thing up. That's my foam filter oil. And it's just easy to apply this way. You see how thick that is? It just gobs on. You just have to try and work it in. Like I said, that Bell Ray stuff, it's so stinking thick. You really have to try to get it on there. Which I do like. I tend to, um, a, you know, a really nice tacky oil is what you want. Um, but gosh, it, it it can make it difficult to get it into the element. But I, I do like it because I tend to over oil my filters, right? Um, and it's kind of just ensures that it's not going to drip out everywhere, and, which I do like. Oh, there you go. We can feel it. It's starting to get in there a bit. I'll give her another squirt or two. Get it worked in. Like I said, I go I go quite a long time on one filter. Now, now don't get me wrong, I take that filter off every now and again and I knock all the excess stuff off. I'm not just leaving it on there, no worries, no cares, for four or five weeks. Um, but, I do. One filter lasts me four or five weeks. Long enough that I'll forget sometimes about it and, and um, haven't had an issue yet, but long enough that I go, ooh, I should probably, probably think about changing that out. So, well, we're all good and oiled up, I think. My hands are covered in oil. We'll change, we'll fix that in a second. Stuff that cage back in there. Okay. Now, you ready for this? This is the secret sauce right here. Tub of grease. I don't care what grease you got, whatever grease it is, it works. This is, this is the key. This is that extra little bit of sealant that you need. The mating surface between your filter and the saw, right? This is the portion that's going to come into contact with your, um, I don't know, people call it the shroud, people call it the intake plate, whatever it is. This is the mating surface. So this is what you really want to get airtight. Debris tight. This is going to keep anything from penetrating or sucking in from the outside through any um, any, any, any holes, people will call them micro debris or fines. Um, this is where their fines are coming through is along the outside edges of your filter. This happens on foam filters. This happens, well, excuse me. This happens on improperly oiled foam filters. And this happens on stock, the, the HD2 still, um, filters, the pleated paper filters. It happens on all filters. You get fines that come through um, between the mating surfaces, right? So you add some grease, an extra little protective layer, and I swear this, this will remedy your issue. I do this with Husqvarna's. I do this with my stills. I do this with my Echoes. I do this with my Makita. Um, 
I swear by it, a lot of people swear by it, and frankly it just makes a lot of stinking sense. It's a little messy, who cares? You're saving your saw out, so. There you go, I'll take a little grease off my fingers here. Put the lid back on my precious grease. And on she goes. Ooh, they're a little dirty there, let's see. On she goes. Just like that, we are ready to go. A little bit of maintenance, a little bit of cleaning, a little bit of uh, filter work. Something's not on right here. Oh, geez. Messed it up. Let's see if I can get it in there without breaking it. Nope, that's not gonna happen. Where is it? There it is. Oh look, while I got this off, this is a really good example as to why this works. Look, there's a ring all the way around that you're sealing You've sealed that surface, those mating surfaces. Had a little bit of a little bit of an extra extra schmoo there, but you've sealed all the way around. That's what's going to give you that ex extra protection. <clears throat> Come on, you fiddly thing. Get in there. There we go. Now we're back in business. There, there we go, that's how it's supposed to fit. Now, I'm gonna say it now for all those who are worried about my threads. Um, <laughs> this is an impact driver, not an impact wrench. It's not putting down a crazy amount of torque. It's an impact driver and I have the, the smaller, what is it, 20 volt? I don't even know. Yep, smaller 20 volt battery on here compared to the the big, so that must be a 2.5 amp hour battery. This is the big five amp hour. This, it puts out a little more torque and then uh, I would be worried or be really gentle to not strip my threads with this battery, with that smaller battery. I'm not worried about it at all. Well, we're maintenance, we're back together. Almost back together. We'll throw this thing in the pickup and we'll call it a day. See you later.
is the cobbler picking up a pair of boots that pair that I cut put some leather toe patches over over both boots for a little protection I tend to step on my toes a little bit so super stoked to get those boots they are Drew's boots if uh, anybody's interested 10 inch logger fantastic boot here he is right here on the right that's Rory Well, just got my boots back. Took them to Rory, my cobbler, the guy I use for my boots. Did a little repair action. He oiled the piss out of these things, but did a little repair from when I cut my boot. And it's looking pretty slick. Stitched, it looks like he's got some seam seal in here and then stitched and then nailed down construction on the leather toe cap there. He said he picked out some rough out to match the boot itself. So no, it doesn't look it right now, but these are rough out boots. He also put the corks on here. These are, these are Drew's boots. So far I've had great luck with them aside from me cutting them. So be wearing them tomorrow. It's going to be a wet one. We're going to see how much, uh, how much all that oil and he did helps. So big shout out to Rory there at Flat Iron in Malala. Just does a fantastic job. Here he comes, coming to clean up my mess. <laughs> 